Well, hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, it's going to be part two of building the kit, which is my Pi DP11, which is really a simulator for the PDP1170 that I used to work on years ago, that I've said in my previous video. Well, now I have the Pi. It's a Pi 4. I didn't want to use a Pi 5 because it's kind of contained for heat, and I'm afraid that uh, the heat might be an issue for that. It also needs more power, the Pi 5, and I want to have some of the power left over. Even though I'll be using a Pi 5 power supply, I want to have some power left over to drive the actual simulator board itself, the thing that we're really building here, right? But I'm going to reload it, and I'm also going to load that special software so this thing is ready to go. So I'm going to go through it step by step. What you're showing here on the screen is actually the instructions, the build instructions that was provided it's on a website that will provide it in order to do the building of this whole unit, which includes hardware, software, and all other information you need to know to build this thing. So I'm scrolling right now on the screen the instructions that will be used to load the software. And once that's done, the next step, part three of this video, will be actually putting the PCB board together, or adding and soldering all of the components on it. But that's in the next video, okay? So let's get started. Well, let's start by setting up the Pi. Um, I did already, just to let you know, following the instructions that uh, the vendor provides, obsolescence guaranteed, and here's the website here. I, will, I do have the link down below, if you wanna click on the link instead down in the notes. But it'll bring you to this website. The first thing you should do, which is what I've already done, is make sure you get all the parts that you expect. They usually they give you extra diodes and extra LEDs and little spaces that you need, so, uh, double check that make sure nothing key is missing the big the big items would be like the rotary switches the knobs the 40 pin uh, extra height pi connector and so forth so you know do go through the whole kit and make sure that it all has it the newer kit which i have has 820 ohms like they say here rather than a thousand ohms designed for those leds we're going to start by following their Instructions piece by piece. There are some erratas to it, and I'll put that up on the screen as well once we start the build because there's even a further errata after this one here, the important change. These videos are nice to watch. There's four videos on basically getting started. But they talk about the first thing you should do before you actually start soldering is to prepare the Pi. They give you three options, but if you read it carefully, it tells you the only real option they want you to use is option number two. Well, the first thing you have to do before you do this, though, is that you have the base Raspberry software installed. Create a username of Pi, so we got to make sure we do that. So what I'll do for now is I'll put this aside. I'll go into Google and see if we can find the Raspberry Pi software. Here's the Google to it. I just typed in Raspberry Pi, and you want to click on this first one under the main category called Software. And when you do that, you will be in the Raspberry Pi software site. And in here, they talk about you know what you need to do to get the software for the Pi and to actually install it on the SD card, which I've already got installed, by the way. I have the SD card now installed onto this PC that I'm doing this uh, video from. And I have to download the download software tool. And it actually doesn't install. I always wondered about that, but I would think it would have been easier if it just went right to the, uh, to the USB and, in this case, a micro SD and just upload it, but you know, they don't do that right now. They make you download this thing. It's downloading the Imager version 1.8.5 at the time when this was filmed. It's changing all the time though. And if you do an open on the Imager, it's asking for the root password in another window. And then once we've done that, then it gives you the install window to in install this little module. It goes pretty quick. And then I want to finish and I want to run it. So when you do that, you wind up with this screen. So we choose a device. I'm using a Pi 4, so I'll click on that, Raspberry Pi 4. I'll choose the OS, which is a regular Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. And then I'm going to choose the storage. There should only be one here. In my case, it's drive F, 128 gig, little SD card. Once I've done that, I can go in and do next. And then next here, I want to edit the settings. It has some default settings that are there. I don't want to use them, so I'm going to edit it. I do want to set the host name, and I'll call it PIDP11. So it's pretty easy for me to identify in the network. It did say use a username, which is PI. 
just pick Pi as the password right now. I don't want to configure wireless right now. My local settings are already correct. America, New York. So I'll just go ahead and save that. I'll set up the wireless later if I choose to do that. But let me see what services we have here. I want to change that as well. So the services, I want to enable SSH. It will use password authentication, not public key encryption. That's more advanced security options, but this is going to be isolated to my home business network. The options, nothing here to change really. So I'll just do a save. Let me go back and make sure that this is set the way I want, and I'll say save. And then at this point, it's ready to format my Pi. Would you like to apply the OS customization settings? Yes. Am I ready to overwrite the SD card, the micro SD? I'm going to say yes. And there we go. I'll zoom ahead here while it writes and then verifies. And there we go. It's all updated with the latest uh, Pi software. I created the account in it. So uh, the next step is I'm going to have to take the card out, put it back into the Pi, and then bring the Pi up separately. And I'll do a screen capture on that and make sure that uh, we have everything we need from it. So let me do that next. Okay, I have the Pi all hooked up. It has a mouse and keyboard on it. I'm plugging it in. Let's see what happens. I see the lights coming on, red and green. Let's see what happens here. There we go. I see something here. You know, it goes through all kinds of patterns. There it goes. Welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Usually takes a little while to come up the very first time, so I'm not surprised by this. I see the disk green light blinking on it. Yeah, screen test. All normal so far. Okay, more green disk access. A solid red power light. I see the network is connected. It is talking to the network. Another test goes through a couple of cycles that I recall the first time. After the first time, it's shorter coming back up after that. Waiting for the desktop to come up. It's a very high resolution right now, so I'm going to have to change that. But let me go over here to the Pi symbol. Click on that. Click Preferences. Then pick Screen Configuration. Layout. Screens. This first screen, I want to go into Resolution. And I want to pick uh, 1920 by 1080. How we go? Here we go. I'll say Apply. And there we go. We got a more reasonable resolution. I'm going to accept that. I want to close that. Let me open up a console window. And it is. Notice it automatically logged me in as Pi. So Pi at PIDP11. That's system name, and that's my account. So it looks good. Let me go ahead now and uh, start configuring the software. Now that we have the uh, Pi up, it's automatically logged into the Pi account. The system is PIDP11 as originally named. Now I'll follow the instructions explicitly for option two for downloading the software for the PIDP11. So the first thing it says to do is do a sudo make directory slash opt PIDP11. Now it says go into CD slash opt. I'll do a ls just to make sure I'm in the right place. And there is the directory I just made. So I'll do a sudo wget http colon backslash backslash pidp.net And then into the subdirectories, PIDP11. And 2024, since it's the latest version. And the name of the file, PIDP11.tar.gz. It's a gzip file. Okay. It's downloaded it. Ah, oh, there it goes. 100% downloaded. So just double check, I will do an ls, and there it is, there's the tar file that I created, okay? The next thing I need to do is uh, gzip it, or basically ungzip it. So I'll do a sudo space minus d pidp11 dot tar dot gz. Looks good. So I'll just hit enter and we'll see what happens. Okay, it does not like what I did. It does not like the minus D. Let me try that again. Sudo, I forgot to do the G zip, that would help. Sudo G zip minus D and then PIDP 
it's very easy when you're doing command line to make mistakes like that so just be aware okay so I think I got it right this time and it looks like it did it we see an LS what do I got here does it look different than before basically it looks the same so now I still got to do a tar of it I do have the tar out there so what it did is it converted from a gzip to a tar so now I got to run the tar command sudo tar space minus xvf xvf I think the f is the force it'll do a verify too and then the name of the tar file pi dp 11.tar okay so we're doing the sudo tar minus xvf pi dp 11.tar let's see what we get it looks like it did it we have everything uh, unzipped let me do an ls now and see what we got here so we put all the stuff in pidp 11 so let me do an ls of pidp 11 i'm just doing double checks here and now we have a bin and etsy and install source systems all of those things added into that as subdirectories subdirectories in this case are this uh, bluish purplish bluish maybe hard to tell it my monitor colors but you never know now it wants me to install it so now i'm going to do sudo slash opt slash pi dp 11 going into that subdirectory a install subdirectory which i just saw so it's there and then a shell script install.sh so that looks like that might be it this may take a while actually so we'll see there she cooks there are many files involved here it might prompt me for yes i think i might have, yeah there it goes i got to give it a yes every so often I think there's more than one of those. Unpacking all the files, installing them. A lot of stuff. This is that sim H mostly. That is uh the basis for this PIDP11 emulator. Another yes. Now this is loading the latest version of this whole package. There's probably about four of them now, right? What's it doing now? After this operation, this space will be used. Okay, let's do it. Getting everything there installed. I don't know why it's asking me that question. Let me say yes. Please answer three, six, or compile from source. Okay, I'm gonna say C for compile from source. I see the disk going, cooking along, the little green light on the Pi. So it's doing something. I probably should have just pick 64-bit binaries. Download and install operating system. Well, might as well say yes and see what we get here. If you want to use RT11, which I eventually do, so I'll just say yes to that. And it's finally done slash opt now according to the instructions i should follow the instructions which i did make sure to load the system disk images through the install script and reboot okay so now it's time to reboot so let me reboot this thing reboot and we're rebooting okay so i jumped back past all of the reboot messages that were showing make sure you specify pi as a default user account that's already done Installing your freshly minted SD card. Okay, they just explain why you net that to Pi. Next, download and install the PDP 11 various operating systems. So these are the other operating systems RT, RT 11, RSX 11, Ristis, and so forth. So now we're going to install those. So it says CD slash op slash PIDP 11. Okay, I'm there. 
should have a lot of stuff in there now, but I'm not going to check. Just well, let me do a listing. Okay. The tar is still there. That's fine. It says sudo another wget. This time it takes a different file on the different tar. sudo wget http colon forward slash forward slash pidp dp dot net and then the subdirectory pidp 11 another forward slash systems a different tar file systems dot dot tar dot gz okay sudo wget http colon forward slash for pidp 11 dot net forward slash pidp 11 forward slash systems dot tar dot gz let's see what we get okay it's bringing it down and it's done 18.3 megabytes per second that's the speed total size 116 megabytes so now we want to do a sudo gzip gzip minus d again systems.tar.tg gz now we're gonna un ungzip it let's see what we get well, okay, I'll overwrite it and see what we got. I don't know why it's asking me that. It's done. Let me do an ls. We're in the right place. PD11, PID11. Okay, so it's already there and it uh, didn't need it apparently. So let's do a sudo with a final tar. Minus XVF systems that tar tar what do we got okay it's bringing it down And it's done. So now after installing the PIDP reboot, and if your Raspbian is set up to boot into the command line after you log in, which I'm not sure I do that, you will find yourself in the PD level boot menu. If you set up to boot the GUI, which I believe is what I did, then I'll have to run a shell script dot slash PDP dot SH. Okay, so I got to reboot again. sudo reboot. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, it's rebooted. I again jumped past all of that uh, initial stuff you get when you reboot a Pi. It's a lot faster than when we first booted it the very first time. It says I have to do a dot slash pdp.sh. First, where am I? Oh, there it is, pdp.sh. So I will do a dot slash pdp.sh. See we got? Cross, cross your fingers. And there we are. We're now running idled. So if I had it connected to the actual Pi device, I would see, I think, all the lights at this point. And then I could pick different options to do different things. So that's it. The software is now loaded on the Pi, and I can go ahead and proceed doing the actual build of the actual emulating hardware. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video as I start soldering stuff in. Take care.